So I'm going to talk, it's a little different than what we've heard about. Um, I'm going to talk about neuroplasticity and its effects on learning. Um, the ways you can teach students the very basics of what neuroplasticity is, and it will encourage them to learn, to show that they actually can learn scientifically. Um, a little caveat, I've never actually practiced this, but I intend to as the school gets back in session to see how it works. Um, so I know neuroplasticity is big. A lot of you have probably heard of it, no. but just pretty, no, okay. Um, <laughs> so okay, so neuro, the brain is plastic. So malleable, movable, it's ever changing, okay? So it's showing that the cells in the brain actually move and grow, just like a muscle. Uh, the more you use it, the more they grow. And it's showing that wires and connections can change grow and diminish. Um, and if you, if you guys want a more in-depth view, please come talk to me after. I'd love to talk neuroscience. Um, so why are we teaching this? Students around fourth, fifth, sixth grade, um, they go through a, a change, many changes, as you guys know, through puberty, but there's also a lot of chemical changes going on within the brain. Um, one of these changes is as the, the level of intensity of classes gets harder, um, they get set into one of two mindsets. They either fall into a fixed mindset, where if, uh, if they can't learn something, they believe to just give up on it. They believe it is uh, an innate ability they do not have. Or they fall into a plastic mindset, again, plasticity, that it can be changed, all right? Um, and this, this practice of teaching neuroplasticity has been proven to change uh, the ability of students to learn. Once taught, these students approach learning in a much more open fashion. And it has been shown uh, over a couple months that they will actually put forth more effort and believe in themselves that they can learn. So this is hopefully something you can implement in a classroom if you're having uh, trouble with students who just feel, why bother? I can't learn anything. Okay, so of the two mindsets, we have fixed. Um, a few bullet points up here. One of the key things is when a fixed mindset student fails, they give up. You all had this when you were younger. I can't, I, I'm bad at math, I'm not made to do math, right? Uh, you hear people like, there's no point, why bother? Um, but the thing with these students is they are not confident in their abilities and so they tend to lash out. You see problem kids, this is, a lot of times they'll be in this mindset that what I do uh, doesn't matter and, and so they try to hide because of shame. So if they can't do something, they might lie to their fellow students that, oh, I did great on that test when they fail, or something like that, and just play it off like that. They'll scapegoat, they'll do anything to further themselves away from that failure. And then they, they intend to, uh, to become problem children, have a lot of fights, all that. The second mindset is plastic. Okay, so when they fail, they um, push hard. They, they love challenge, they rise to the challenge. Okay, um, and they actually believe that their abilities can improve with practice. Um, so the basics of neuroplasticity, if you explain this to kids, you want to be basic, as many of you have not heard of neuroplasticity. Um, you've probably come across it in any general biology course. Um, essentially, the big key to remember here is um, fire together, wire together. When you start associating things in your brain by a, a, a historical event in a date, you start wiring those two connections in your brain from two synapses down to one uh, postsynaptic terminal, uh, which you don't need to explain. But uh, <laughs> it's pretty much one thing that when you keep practicing and learning, these connections get closer and closer and closer. When they are firing all their neurochemicals, they're shooting action potentials, which are just a lot of chemicals making an electronic charge beyond an axon. They keep firing more and more, they will, uh, and they're firing at the same time, they'll get closer to another axon. And that's how you help form memories, okay? Um, there's a lot of jargon on here. I actually just won't go into it. This is some complex stuff. If you guys want to learn about it, uh, how, how things actually go in the actual channels and stuff to help you have a better understanding, I can do that. So when you teach kids, if they have further questions, you can go on from there too. Um, so again, really basic what's happening that you try to explain to people is this is how memories are made. Build it like a muscle. Okay? Kids love to learn about getting fit and strong at that age. It's just tell them that their, their brain is a muscle. The more you use it, the more it will grow and you will learn. Kids who used to think they were awful at soccer, once they found out that if they practice more and more, they gain. This, this can come as very general, obvious knowledge to us maybe that, of course, if I practice, I'll gain that knowledge. 
But for stuff like math and science and stuff, they think if they can't do it, uh, all is lost. Um, the, the key is though they really need to comprehend what they're learning. That's again where us as teachers and volunteers come in, come in handy um, to show them how to actually learn. But the more repetition they have, as you all know, the more they'll learn. Um, so to how to teach this, again, really basic, that when they learn, something fires in their brain, and the more they do it, the more it will grow, and they can scientifically learn. Tell them you can do this, you can learn. It's not impossible. Wrapping it up. Um, so to really apply this, okay, show them in a lesson, um, tell them that the, the, the brain is infant. It really has a, a never-ending ability to learn. Okay, and then you can give them one-on-one -on -one tutoring with this. Uh, um, help, it helps if you use real-world examples, uh, showing them that, you know, Kumi drivers, they have a large motor cortex because they practice over and over. They used to not be able to have that because of, uh, but with firing together and wiring together, they can learn. And then you can apply it to actual school skills. Um, a big one that has been shown to help a lot is they don't fail kids. You can't obviously bring this into the school on reports, but on specific examples, uh, and assignments, they don't get A, B, C, F, they get an N, Y. That means not yet. That shows that there is potential, that you keep trying, you will get this. Failure, they give up, they lash out, they don't want to hear it. Show them that they actually can, it is actually physically possible for them to learn. Um, with Swaziland, you have to make a few altercations. Uh, they did some experience, experiments with this with Native American school children, um, that if you make it to something culturally uh, applicable to them, they are better to uh, be encouraged to learn. So if you encourage kids, why do I want to learn? You can just go straight to the point. They'll make your family proud, you'll make money, all that stuff. Um, there's some challenges with lack of resources and stuff, but there is a lot to do. People are hungry. Um, so that's it. If you guys want to know more, sorry, real quick, but let me know.